All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Sean, and I will be refuting the main claim that the media has a negative effect on women. First, I'd like to point out my opponent's main or first secondary claim that the media puts pressure on women by its constant exposure to skinny models. This statement is not entirely true because the evidence presented does not even give the claim warrant. In fact, there is little evidence that actually directly supports her claim. She used evidence from an article written by Joel Miller, which stated that the average American woman weighed 166 pounds with a 37-inch waist. She then proceeds to give more statistics, but does not give one about the percentages of media that actually expose skinny models. She does not even, um, she continues to give more percentages, but none of them do not support her main, or first secondary claim, that uh, the media is constantly exposing these skinny models. She does also not take into account the types of media that have absolutely nothing to do with exposing these types of people, um, such as video game enterprises, children networks, evening news channels, um, and many other commercials, magazines, and films that do not pertain to any type of this information. As for her second claim, she states that the media shows a false representation of beauty that is impossible to achieve. Right off the bat, her claim is undermined because she says that it is impossible to achieve, so something that is impossible cannot be done. So right off the bat, she, it's, it doesn't make any sense. So if it were impossible to match, then there wouldn't be thousands of women and models all over the world claiming their own sense of beauty, posing in magazines, articles, films, etc. Furthermore, she illustrates the example of Kate Winslet taking action against GQ for apparently altering photos of her body, making her look unrealistically skinny. Although this does check out, Seventeen Magazine actually posted a um, a little con er, little piece of information in their July six or the July two thousand twelve issue that vowed to not digitally digitally enhance any of their photographs. CNN actually did an article that this was so shocking and quoted the magazine saying they did not want their images to celebrate every or they wanted their images to celebrate every kind of beauty. Moreover, stating the media in general shows false representation of beauty is just fallacious. Her third claim um, is that the media has a negative influence of women, leading to harmful effects on their body. She begins by stating that the images women see in media, like television and magazines, lead to them to become elite, uh, bulimic. She also states that bulimia and anorexia are eating disorders caused by mental insecurities. According to uh, the online health journal, WebMD, eating disorders are complex and experts don't really know what caused them but they may be due to a mix of family history, social factors, and personal traits. So to say that these diseases are caused by only insecurities is not true, when in reality there are a multitude of factors that lead to the development of these diseases. She also has evidence that states 73% of teenage girls abuse diet pills and 79% of teens who self-purge frequently read Women's Health magazine. This is a radical statistic and unfortunately I could not find any source to the subject but according to a study published by the University of Minnesota, only about 14% of middle-aged women just use uh, diet drugs, not even accounting how many abuse the drugs. And then the, the, it only reaches its highest rate of 20% of uh, using at ages 19 to 20, and that's its highest. After finding this, I don't think it is fair to infer that the majority of teenagers are abusing diet pills when it's not the case. Moreover, in my opponent's speech, she makes no note of the media that promotes good health, eating habits, or anything that will benefit a woman's body and um, physique. For example, television, sh television shows such as The Biggest Loser, Children Networks, The Health Network, all are um, devoted to motivating people to be healthier, making their bodies look better, and becoming an overall better person, etc. So overall, only a fraction of media exploits or puts pressure on women. So to make the claim that the media is, as a whole has a negative effect on women is just untrue. Thank you.
All right, structurally everything is fine. Uh, it sounds at the end like you basically are coming down on the position that the advocate has made a sweeping generalization here and that uh, you're not going to deny that some media may have uh, some effect, but uh, in general that is not the description of the media that's going on here. Uh, on your first point, for instance, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the example of the... Um, skinny models and the exposure, and you say that the advocate didn't provide us any statistical information on the exposure of these skinny models. Uh, you might, you know, I think in a couple, in another place, you do some original research yourself trying to figure out the thing on the diet pills. It seems like this would have been a good place to talk about those kinds of things as well. You know, what percentage of the American population, for instance, is women? What percentage fit into this particular category? What percentage actually consume these uh, media, like uh, magazines with these ads in them or watch these programs and my guess is that it would be similar to what you were talking about before with the uh, diet pills probably a relatively small proportion which would then make your argument a little bit stronger I, I know the argument that you're making here is basically the same thing but I, it just seems strange that you went to the effort on the on the diet pill thing and not doing the same thing on that point uh, on the on the second issue, I think you get a little lost on this idea about it being impossible, and you know, well, how could it be impossible, or it, is it impossible? Because somebody's doing. I don't know that that gets you anything. Uh, I do think that you have a good point to make here, and it, it should be phrased as a counterclaim, that uh, many media publications have uh, tried to limit this kind of activity, and then you point to the Seventeen magazine. I think that's a good example, and uh, it is a singular example, but it does seem to undermine the generalization that the advocate is talking about. On the third point, I thought that you did a nice job uh, arguing multiple causes of bulimia and uh, minimizing the impact impact of the diet pills argument that's being presented, and then also providing some counterexamples on media that might have this other effect. And this would be another place where maybe you could show, for instance, you know, the biggest loser is like the most popular television show among these particular groups. That might be another way to make that argument a little bit stronger. All right. Thank you.